Okay, thank you very much, Antonio. Uh, I hope everybody can see my screen. Uh, I just can imagine that a lot of students now sitting at home getting completely fed up with COVID and Giga Storage hopes to entertain you a little bit for the next 45 minutes uh, and giving you some content and things to think about as well. So uh, thanks for the opportunity for us to present ourselves uh, to this for us very important audience. Uh, the title of our lecture is The Missing Link in the Energy Transition. Um, and we have vision to um, speed up a PowerPoint presentation pretty quickly. Uh, and I'll have my colleagues from Kika Storage helping me out on some topics. Uh, and I would like to open the floor at the end of the presentation to you with some questions, if you don't mind, so that we can be sure that we can actually first show the whole presentation to you. So this is the agenda. Uh, I will start with an introduction of Giga Storage. Uh, and then there are three main parts of the company, that is the Giga Storage projects, the tangible projects, the Giga Storage platform, the IT platform. And then from the products and services we have, we think that the trading services, the energy services is the most important part to, um, to present to you. Um, and we will end up with showing the team to you. Um, so what I did is, first of all, um, think about my audience and the audience are students from the TU Delft. So we believe that these uh, people are might be interested in these topics, the engineering uh, part, being interested in the projects, uh, web technology on storage platform, and data science and artificial intelligence on the energy services side. Um, so I will start with the introduction. Um, so often energy scarcity is the topic of the energy debate, and we are running out of energy, yeah? and then we mean oil and gas. And the truth is that that is not the truth. The truth is, by a matter of fact, that we are blessed with an abundance of renewable energy, and they are all directly or indirectly derived from the sun. Um, so we don't have a scarcity problem, we have a, um, a CO2 problem. And by converting from fossil energy to re renewable energy, we, um, we prevent that problem. Um, so that's why renewable energy production, distribution, and storage are the key drivers towards a fossil free uh, world. And Giga Storage has the ambition to become the market leader in sustainable energy storage in Europe um, in order to fully uh, utilize the sustainable generated energy. Um, well, we do this with building a patchwork of energy storage projects with virtually combining them with an IT platform and deliver all kinds of energy storage services, both locally as for balancing the electricity network. Um, uh, I'm, I'm just putting in here uh, uh, own energy first. For those who are Dutch, know that we have a political party who state that we would need to have the, the Netherlands first. Uh, we do believe that if we use our own energy, we don't need to use the energy from the outside. And you know that happens to be fossil energy as well. So if we choose own energy first and create an abundance of local energy, we will be less reliant from the international energy market. Um, and the electricity mix is important to look into that. So up to so far, the renewable part in the electricity mix is not that big. You see it growing pretty quickly, but you see that the largest part of the existing energy mix is still uh, around 80%. But if you look at the forecast for the coming years, you will see that we are reaching a tipping point around 2030, where 50% of our um, electricity demand is covered by renewable energy. Um, and in 2050, it will be even more. And uh, with renewable energy, flexibility is a given. Uh, flexibility um, will is, you know, uh, renewable energy is dependent on the weather and that drives a supply driven rather than a demand driven uh, electricity market. Um, so at the end of the day, with increased volatility, um, we need a balancing between the suppliers and the demand. To make it a very simple graph, uh, on the left-hand side, you see renewable energy completely dependent on the weather. And some, some of them are predictive, but still not at the right time, at the right place. So you need, amongst others, you need uh, energy storage to balance out the electricity net. So to be sure that we have a safe um, electricity supply. Now, uh, that's more or less macro. If we look at our company, then this is more or less the, 
the um, storage boards or the, the strategy board of our company. So on the right hand side, you see that we are working on several physical energy storage projects and we are looking for strategic uh, spots into the grid to be sure that we can actually benefit from that spot. Um, next to that, we are actually combining those tangible projects into a virtual environment. And with that virtual environment, we try to offer more products and services than only the local services, because the reason why you are looking for a good spot into the electricity market is to do those local services like peak saving, congestion management and curtailment. Um, but if you combine it into one big uh, virtual battery, you can actually do much more than that. Um, as I said, those uh, products and services, I will in this presentation drill to into the energy services a little bit as well. And on the left hand side, you see actually the stakeholders, clients um, of our company. Um, so yeah, this is more or less our uh, long term view. So that's for the introduction. Um, we believe that energy storage is really important to balance out the demand uh, and supply of renewable energy. And that with in, um, energy storage, you actually can speed up the energy transition. Um, for sure in the Netherlands, we do believe we are lacking behind in this case. Uh, there are a couple of energy companies who have energy storage projects like Green Choice has a, a battery at Harto Canal, but they are all linked to their own client portfolio. What we do is we are a arm's length company really looking to, for, to balance out the electricity net. Now, what I said, we have three main topics into the company, storage projects, storage platform, products and services. I will do the projects myself and then hand it over to uh, my colleagues. Um, the first project, uh, and we give them all the big five names, by the way. Uh, the first project uh, is called the Giga Rhino project. That's actually live since November last year. Um, uh, since we are talking to technical people, I give you here a couple of uh, technical uh, data. As you see in uh, here, we have two uh, 52 53 feet containers filled up with lithium ion batteries. And in the middle of this picture, you see in the center, you see transformers. And on uh, the top and the bottom, you see the inverters. Um, so this is the whole setup of the whole project. Uh, it's a 12 megawatt project, seven and a half megawatt hour. And with that, the most powerful battery uh, energy storage project in the Netherlands as, uh, as we speak right now. Um, uh, after um, uh, deploying this one, we are immediately working now on the next one, which will be much bigger and will be uh, positioned um, in the same spot here in Lelystad. Uh, I think it's good to mention that in Lelystad, we are part of a smart grid and it's smart grid connects um, an abundance of renewable energy sources like wind and solar into one smart grid. And we are part of that smart grid. We are planning um, to put on a, um, a 24 megawatt, 48 hour megawatt hour battery package next to the Rhino. And that's what we call Buffalo. So our next project, uh, which we hope to um, start building uh, this summer, um, being commissioned at the beginning of next year uh, to really, really increase, increase this site. Um, well, next to those projects, which are really tangible and um, will happen, we have uh, two strategic ways forward. First of all, we are um, we do want to go for the real big one. That's what we call for there for the elephant. Uh, we are considering a 300, 400 megawatt uh, uh, energy storage plant, as we, by the way, see in other countries in the world come popping up right uh, right now as well. So, for instance, in California and the UK, um, and with this 400 megawatts. For sure, those um, this kind of storage facilities needs to be rented out, and that's what we're going to do. By the way, with the Buffalo project as well, we are renting out those storage facilities to energy companies, managing their own flexibility next to the fact that we are trading ourselves. Um, so the elephant is we have still a lot of hurdles to overcome, uh, and not the last, not the, the, last, the last one would be our tax hurdles we have in the Netherlands, but we are working on that. So th at least we are ready to go for a project like this. Um, and another strategic direction is that we would like to go for, let's say, a repetitive way of 
launching smaller energy storage projects on strategic places. And just to give four examples, uh, that could be at sports clubs where you can have a lot of renewable energy being coming in, but that's probably not at the moment that you can use it because you will use your lights at the evening and the sun will shine during the day. So batteries can play a role in there. Um, uh, in big industries, this is an example of Skiphole, with big industries we will have both prosumers and consumers. We can bring them together and balance them out before you go into the, the electricity grid. Uh, the agricultural sector has more or less the same ideas, but also things like auto dealers or loading, uh, loading platforms is where you know demand and supply of energy will be concentrated and there is a time issue there and you know actually energy storage projects prevent this time issue for electricity um, we call that giga cups because cups looks like cubes uh, and we think that smaller batteries can be a repetitive model so if we have done one we can easily do it with others as well um, so that is uh, uh, on the tangible side of the projects. Uh, as I said, next to the tangible sides, we need an um, IT platform to actually link all those batteries together and bring us to the market. And But what we need as well is we need a lot of intelligence on when do we want to charge, when do we want to discharge, how, do, how does that work? And that's why I'm giving the floor right now to, I think, uh, Jeroen first our CIE, CIO to talk about the uh, Giga storage platform. Yeah, thanks, Ruth. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is uh, Jeroen Buys. Uh, I came to Delft in 1979, which is really a long time ago, to study information technology, but that was still part of the mathematics uh, department. Uh, so lots of things have changed uh, since then, but I still like working in the, in the IT world. And it's really uh, nice to combine the energy transition with uh, my IT job at uh, Giga. And when I joined uh, Giga two years ago, I thought that managing a battery was really simple. Um, maybe you can show the next slide, uh, Ruth. Uh, what what do you have? You have you have a battery, right? And uh, you have uh, wind farms, and you have a grid. So the only thing you need is a small piece of software uh, to manage your battery. And the only thing it can do is charging and uh, discharging. So uh, it can't be that hard. Um, but it turned out that it was a little bit more complicated than this. So first I started learning about the uh, energy world uh, and it turned out that the battery looks quite different uh, as already shown and it's not one, but there are, we have multiple batteries. We're starting with two, but many more to come. Those batteries are all running battery management systems, which are rather complicated systems. You have PLCs in there. Uh, you need a local server to manage uh, the devices. Um, and it's not only a battery, eh? you, you, need, you need to monitor a lot of things and all of those issues are really important. The, they give alarms, whatever. The grid looks really easy, but still you need to measure temperatures, you need to do metering, whatever. Um, then you think, okay, the wind farm, that will be straightforward, but it isn't. You know, you have to need to think about what's happening when those wind farms generate a lot of power or they don't generate any power at all. You need to be aware of the wind forecast. Our central system has uh, quite a few modules. So we do trading, we do uh, lots of simulations. We have uh, trading bots uh, running and a quite a complex decision algorithm. And next to that, you need market forecast. So we have quite a few interfaces running. You need weather forecast, you need data from Tenet, and you need data from uh, around 10 energy markets. And to connect it all, we have messaging running. Uh, but messaging again needs a reliable infrastructure. So we had to organize that as well. And then, we are going to have uh, external customers 
Uh, we call that uh, STAS, which is storage as a service. And those customers have to be connected to our platform as well. So this is in short our, our platform as it is running today. I will now hand over to Yip for a more detailed look of the system. Awesome. Thank you very much, Jeroen. So uh, I, came, I came to Delft uh, a little later than Jeroen. I started studying computer science in 2015. I finished my bachelor there and currently I'm following the master data science and technology. And so Jeroen gave you guys a rundown of the big picture of our platform and, uh, and all the different assets we're, we're sort of working with. And I want to zoom in into our own platform and the intelligence we uh, keep in-house. And I wanted to look at three different things, the automated trading we're doing on different energy markets, how we actually make a decision with our battery, and then eventually how we visualize those results and what actually earns us money and why they can pay my salary at the end of the day. So let's start off with the automated trading. So this graph here on the right is the imbalance market. And the imbalance market is basically the every minute market. And the reason there is imbalance is because like Ruta already told you guys, supply and demand don't always match up. And if they don't match up a little, you pay around 30 euros for your energy. But see, so as you can see in this graph, these prices peak and the highest peak we've seen in the past week, you actually have to pay 700 euros for your energy. And so to make a decision about which positions we want to take on these energy markets, we run a statistical analysis on historical data of these energy markets. And then based on that analysis, we can take a position. And then once we have a position on an energy market, so we've already told the market we want to buy or sell, we can see if we can trade that position with a NACO or Green Choice or any other um, energy partner and see if we can trade them for a profit or maybe trade them for a loss if we don't want our position anymore. Or we can actually decide to use our battery. So what does it look like when we use our battery? That's the uh, next slide. We have to take all of these things into account when choosing, uh, when making a decision with our battery. And so one of, the uh, one of the things we look at is the financial aspect. So like I just said, we might have a market position and there are market prices we have to take into account, right? So if there's a peak at 700, we might want to discharge our battery. But besides the financial aspects of when we want to discharge or charge our battery, we also have to look at our technical aspects. So is there actually energy in our battery? That's the current state of charge. Um, is the temperature of the battery, does that allow us to take action? Because charging generates a lot of heat. And like you know, with your smartphone, if it gets too warm, the battery doesn't enjoy that. And the same goes if you use your smartphone in a ski lift, it might turn off. So in the same way, we need to manage our temperature of our battery. And then the final thing we have to look at um, that I want to share with you, we'll look at a lot more, is our power guarantees. So the same way, if you use your smartphone a lot, charging, discharging all the time, we see that the um, that, that it starts working less well and that it, the, the guarantees go bad. And so we have guarantees to our battery supplier that we have to keep an eye on. And so these are all the things we take into account when making a decision with the battery. So once we've looked at our market positions and we've made a decision with our battery, something actually happens. And that brings us to our result. In the top graph, you can see uh, which actions our battery has taken on the 3rd of February. And the red line in that top graph is our actual battery. And so what actually happened. And so the red line, as you can see here, is a big discharge. So we discharged nearly two megawatt hours, which is, um, which is around sort of one entire container of energy. And so if you combine that actual decision, if you combine that with our market position, something happened on the energy market and actual houses in the Netherlands needed energy. Somebody wanted a cup of tea. And so they had to pay for that energy and that energy uh, and that money ends up on our bank account. And so you can see that in that quarter of an hour, we actually earned nearly a thousand euros. And so 
we try to visualize this. We try to keep Root happy. We try to keep my salary paid. And we try to uh, keep our investors happy in this as well. So this was a short little dive into our platform. And now I'll give it back to you, Ruth. Yeah, thank you very much, Jeroen and Jip. Uh, it's not only me being happy, but we have a lot of investors behind us and we need to pay them back as well. <laughs> okay, so I'll give the floor to, um, to Sve and Sumit to talk a little bit more on the energy trading part, so the, the artificial intelligence algorithm part. Uh, Sway Sumit, you have the floor. Thank you, Ruud. Uh, hi, my name is Sway Lung. I'm a, a graduate from TU Delft Leiden in the study of industrial ecology. Uh, when I was in TU Delft, I was part of TPM as well. So here in Giga Storage, I'm a data analyst together with Sumit. Um, and what we do here is mostly uh, analyzing how the battery should trade in the energy markets. And we do that by creating simulation models, uh, not only about how the battery behaves, but also um, how the market could potentially uh, behave uh, in that sense. That will give us some kind of forecasting uh, uh, information to, make, to help the battery make decisions uh, in real time. So uh, besides that, we also continuously trade in the market uh, manually as well. So I think you, you are on mute now. Sorry. Um, we also use neural networks and machine learning to help us uh, gain more insights into the different variables that affect the energy market and we can get better forecasts uh, with our battery decision making. So I'll hand it over to Sumit to talk a little bit more about the energy market. Uh, hi, uh, I'm Sumit Sial, uh, I did my master's in complex. Sorry, uh, Sumit, oh. your uh, voice dropped out. Oh, okay. Can I go again? Uh, I am Sumit. I did my master's in complex systems engineering and design uh, with a specialization in energy systems from the faculty of TPM at New Delft. Uh, at Giga Storage, I work with Sway on designing algorithms, strategies, and analyzing. Uh, yeah, can you please go to the next slide? Uh, sorry, Sumit. For some reason, your mic drops a little bit after each sentence. Maybe uh, keep it closer. I'm not sure what's happening. Okay. Uh, yeah, anyways. What's that? Um, uh, can you hear me properly? Yes. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, so, one of the things that uh, Rude mentioned. So I'm just going to walk you through how the energy trading looks like. Uh, so mostly during the weekdays, we take buy and sell positions, buy or sell positions in the day ahead market. So what is a day ahead market? The day ahead market is an auction-based market where participants place their orders or positions. The submitted orders are matched. And a simple price is uh, sorry, sorry, Sumit, your, your microphone keeps having problems. It might be a good idea if Sway or Ruth maybe takes over. Yeah, I think it's better that Sway takes over, I guess. Because, uh, I, I think that would be best. Sway, would that be possible? Yeah, sure. Uh, just pardon my background noises as I'm traveling. So uh, in the day ahead market, we take a, a buy or sell position uh, in the day ahead market with bid in. And that is based on our strategies that we have learned from our data analysis. And once we have taken the positions, we try to uh, buy or sell these positions in the intraday market. And then in turn, try to also uh, close these positions if possible, if they're favorable. But if they aren't, then we leave it to the imbalance market. And here we steer uh, based on the pricing of the imbalance market. And we also look at different variables that might be uh, contributing to the volatility of the imbalance market price here. And um, 
So everything that we do here in the market is connected to the battery um, in a sense that whatever our trading decisions will be will affect the status of the battery in the short term and in the long term. So we have to be uh, careful and, uh, and consider uh, not only the market conditions, but also the battery conditions as well. So uh, I don't know if Sumit wants to jump back in to add more to this, but I think I have covered everything for Sumit here. Yeah, yeah I think, think so as well. Thank you very much, uh, Sway and Sumit. Uh, um, you, you can imagine that uh, I am a business economist out of uh, the Erasmus University of Rotterdam, and I'm surrounded by all those technical guys. You can imagine that I not understand them every time, but uh, at the end of the day, we're making money, and that's what I'm looking for. So this always goes closing the loop, as we call it, in the circular economy. Um, so that is more or less the uh, part uh, we wanted to present. I just wanted to show you a little bit more on uh, the team. Um, this is the team we are working on right now. We have an advisory board on the top. Uh, you might recognize the second one here. That is Mr. Ruth Kornstra. Um, the, we have somebody else uh, here uh, on the right-hand side. That's one of the originators, um, uh, shareholders from Green Choice, who's helping us a lot uh, with this energy knowledge. And some of the pictures you see here, you have seen in the presentation here. So the team is small, but fast growing. Um, and just to close off this part of the presentation before we open up for questions, I just wanted to bring it back to a little bit more, uh, let's say strategy and where we are. I'm, I'm not sure if you recognize this picture. This picture has started, uh, as presented in 1972, probably far before most of you have been born. This is uh, presented by the Club of Rome. And what they did is they predicted uh, uh, important issues and they warned the world inside 1972 the club of rome that the world was going in the wrong direction and that we really needed to change our attitude you see where we are right now is the red line here and that at this moment all those economics indicators are still okay but the predictions are pretty bad um now the good news is what i believe is that one important line in this picture is lacking and that is you, that is the innovation. Innovation is always changing uh, the economy and the world. And what we need, we need innovation. We need to also stay ahead of the, this, this kind of waves. And we are, telling, we are challenging you as students to come up with new innovative ideas to speed up the energy transition and to prevent this kind of graphs. And that's why I believe that um, the industry will need you. Uh, we will need you as well. Um, uh, we will need you uh, uh, to whatever you want to do to to write a thesis or to um, to look into us. At this moment, we are small, but our ambition is big. Uh, I presume that uh, next uh, months and years you will wait till COVID is over and enjoy your student life. But after that, you are more than welcome to come and talk to us. Um, so that's actually pre uh, ending the presentation uh, so far. And Antonio, so I just wanted to open up the floor for any questions. Thank you very much, uh, Ruth and Sway, Sumit. Um, thank you all the speakers today uh, for this very interesting lunch lecture. There's uh, some time for some questions and there are some questions uh, which have also been answered in the, in the chat box. I'm not sure if there's anything uh, uh, left unanswered. I see that Jeroen uh, Bijs has uh, answered some questions. Now we have a new question going in. Do you expect to use redox flow batteries for future installations or stick with lithium ion? That's a very good question. I think the, um, um, what we do, we, we say we are battery technology independent as because we are looking into uh, the platform as we described, but we are continuously looking into battery technologies and we are pretty much aware of the redox flow technology, uh, which has some great advantages. And one of the most important advantages is that you can do endless cycles during a day, uh, where this kind of batteries are, are limited to a couple of cycles per day because we need to manage the temperature as uh, Yip 
rightfully uh, pre presented. And with Redox Flow, you don't need to do so. Um, the issue at this moment is for, at, for this moment is that the uh, capital expenditures, the CAPEX, is very, very high. Uh, but we are talking to some companies to see if we can reduce that. Because what we, at the end of the day, what we need to do is we need to present business cases to our investors and financiers. Uh, and then we need to combine well, the, the CAPEX and the OPEX to a profitable business proposition. Um, at this moment, we believe we can only do that if we get a pretty big subsidy to do so. But uh, I think on, in the future, we are very much prepared to look into the Redox flow technology as one of the future technologies to use. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ruth. That's a very clear answer, uh, I believe. Um, we also have some other questions. I'm going to try to, to pick some interesting ones. Next, next one is from, uh, from Luca uh, Ariolas. Um, the question is, which are the most profitable markets? Uh, could you maybe name a list of the most profitable markets from uh, high to low? This might be a difficult question, I'm not sure. Well, as long as my colleagues are not unmuting, then I will take that question as well. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I think I can I can briefly say something sway. here. That is sway. Yeah. So I think it really depends on your trading strategy of which market you want to um, be active in and how do you view the risks that you want to take. In our case, uh, I, I personally think the imbalance market uh, will give you the most profit uh, and, then, and then the intraday. Yeah, I think and to add on that, uh, you know, this kind of battery projects are financed on a tenor of 15 to 20 years. So what can be profitable today can be unprofitable tomorrow. So what we need to do, and that's why we need in intellectual people, we always need to look into those markets, look into the forecast, find out how the energy mix is changing, what's happening on the European playing field, and adapt our strategy and our algorithms into that. So, you know, the imbalanced market can be profitable today on even the FCR market. Uh, the, the frequency reserve market is very profitable today, but that, that can change tomorrow. Yes, that sounds very clear. Um, in light of uh, people that might be needed to uh, support giga storage in the future, there's a request to go back to the previous slide where your contact details were on screen. Um, thank you very much, uh, Ruth. Uh, we can go on to another question, which um, I find it interesting. Emilia asks, uh, it's a long question. Actually, I think there are two. First of all, does the Dutch market structure and regulatory framework support the monetization of all these services energy storage can provide to the grid? So uh, that's the first question. And second, also very interesting, what are the main changes necessary to make energy storage more economically attractive in the Netherlands? Okay, I'm, I'm not so sure if I really heard the first question, um, but let's start with the second one. Uh, that's a very important one. Um, in the Netherlands, we have an energy law. And in the energy law, um, um, there is decided that um, uh, the, the cost from our networks, so that's tenant for the high voltage network, and that is Leander and, um, um, and others, and Nexus and so from the, from the mid-level network, those costs are actually called transportation costs. And you and I, we all are paying those transportation costs. And in the law, uh, it's decided that the energy consumer is paying those costs. So an energy producer doesn't pay anything for that. So if you are a coal-fired station, but also a windmill, and you deliver energy to the network, you don't pay any transportation costs. If you take energy from the network, like you and me in the industry, you have to pay those transportation costs. Now, the weird thing is that energy storage is actually taking energy from the net to balance out the net and then to bring it back to the net. And we are grouped into energy consumers. So our costs, our business model model is completely ruined by the transportation costs. Um, uh, even in some cases, 60, 70 percent of our operational expenditures are transportation costs. Uh, in countries including us, Germany, Belgium, the UK, this has been solved by creating a, sep a separate asset class called energy storage next to energy consumers, energy producers. 
and there were different transportation costs on that one. So we are even not in a European level playing field. And this is really, really blocking the growth of energy storage projects. So you probably should could, uh, repeat the first question, but that's the answer on the second one. Uh, uh, yes, thank you very much. Ruth. The first question uh, was, does the Dutch market structure and regulatory framework support the monetization of all the services energy storage can provide to the grid? So okay. I mean, whether the yeah. Dutch market structure uh, supports the, the energy storage uh, solutions. Yeah, you know, I think the uh, it's the answer is more or less the same. But um, just to add one thing, um, uh, the energy companies are all big guy giants, and we are a very small company. We are Mickey Mouse entering the energy industry, uh, trying to make a difference and to make a material difference, and that implies that you have to cope with. Um, I, I say it in Dutch, and you, you might be uh, translate this gestolde belangen, as Ruud Kornstra calls it. So there are, you know, uh, people are within their structure and they are happy with that. And we are here to change. And that makes it uh, so now and then a little bit difficult. Thank you very much. I think that's very clear. Um, there, is, there are some other questions. I'm trying to find the question which is unanswered. Uh, I see one from uh, Luc. Uh, how do you see the future value or opportunities for electro, uh, electrolysis parallel to battery services. Do you see giga storage also moving in such a direction? Uh, in what? In elect electrolysis, I think uh, green energy production um, from hydrogen. OK, well, um, uh, let's say storage is a container word. Uh, storage uh, can be def defined as, uh, as storing energy. But what we do with our batteries is uh, acting into the uh, very short-term uh, frequency market. Uh, we are not in, let's say, a winter-summer storage or day and night storage. And you will need other technologies to do those kind of services as well. And I think heat and hydrogen uh, are all kind of uh, and tidal tidal energy. Um, uh, you have all kind of technologies looking into the energy storage market. And so far, Giga Storage has focused on the high frequency market because that's where we can make a business case to be quite honest as soon as we can see that we can business cases in other areas we will for sure go into there as well and now on the hydro electricity side um, that is a very a hot topic um, my personal view is that hydro electricity can only work if there is an abundance of uh, energy which you can't use it, use in another way because the energy co co coefficient uh, between hydro and electricity is not that good um, as, for instance, solar and uh, wind. So if there is an abundance of energy, for instance, in offshore wind parks, you might consider changing that into hydro and bring it later back to into electricity. For us, it doesn't matter. You know, We are in those balancing play fields. We are completely independent on, on those kinds of uh, technologies. That's a very, uh, very clear answer. I think that also answers the question of Zeno, which uh, who asks, what do you think is the best long-term storage option to conquer the seasonal differences? And I think the, the answer is that uh, there are certainly also other um, options and, and, and uh, that are needed, such as hydrogen technology or yeah. heat storage. And what we really like is that we see in this market a lot of new ideas coming up on storage. And we are actually really uh, underlying the importance of that to make it better and better every day. Uh, if you just at lo looking at electronic vehicles and the range, uh, and you see what's happening right now on the extension of those ranges, that's a good example of uh, changes and developments in batteries. Um, uh, and more or less the same counts for us. I mean, we are looking, for instance, for electronic vehicles as well. If you combine them into one spot, you have a battery. So there will be changes on that one as well. And Mr. Elon Musk uh, has already launched a separate division on that to connect all the Teslas into one grid and make it one big battery. Uh, we are looking into all those kinds of new developments. And I think especially if you are at the beginning of your career, it would be very interesting to see what, what's happening on all those kinds of technologies. Interesting, interesting. I think um, considering the time, uh, we should uh, uh, slowly be rounding up. There's um, one more um, question 
that is uh, posed that, that I would like to ask. And then afterwards, I would say, if there are more questions, please be sure to email uh, Giga Storage personally. Um, I, I believe they would uh, gladly um, answer your questions. But we have uh, a question here from Yonis who says, theoretically speaking, how much battery capacity would be needed to balance one gigawatt of renewable energy production on a weekly basis? It's a technical question. Yeah. Depends on what the weather does, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> and I think here the question, the, the question is a little bit more clarification as to what balancing what? Right? Are you asking about CO2 or something like that? Yes, um, I, I would uh, I would say to have continuable uh, energy uh, capacity. Um, I, I, I assume. Well, that... well, you know, probably what I can say, and uh, we, we you need to do the math and need to know why it's for. But what I can say is that um, research institutes like DNVGL and TNO expects that we will need uh, a terawatts of energy storage in Europe to balance out the electricity network. So there are all kinds of forecasts on the long run that we really, really need to invest in energy storage. It's probably not completely the answer to the question, but for sure that's why what we are presenting to our investors, that we are just at the beginning of a complete new uh, industry sector, and that's called the asset energy storage. Great. Um, thank you so much, uh, Ruth. And I think I think that um, it was also an eye opener to know that uh, Giga Storage also focuses on energy trading. Um, and I'm sure some students I already got some personal messages are interested in uh, contacting you for uh, for future purposes. Uh, so thank you very much for the whole um, uh, the whole um, presentation. I uh, I uh, had a certain thing that I wanted to show at the end for uh, our students. There are actually two things. Uh, the first one is, I'll, I'll share my screen really quickly. Um, first of all, I have, there we go. Can you see my screen? Uh, Alize, can you, see, can you see my screen? Yes, we can see your screen. Okay, so uh, first of all, I wanted to say that um, we want to uh, shine the spotlight on one of the research institutes of the TU Delft who focuses on the power web of the Netherlands, for example, and that they host many events that have to do with the power web and also with storage. So if you're interested in that, you can Google the power web Institute of TU Delft and, uh, and find out more about uh, the Institute and uh, get into contact with the people and the researchers in case you maybe want to do your thesis on it. And then second of all, something that might be a little bit more fun is that tomorrow we will be handing out these tote bags um, at the uh, different supermarkets in Delft. Uh, this is uh, Javier from our board uh, holding one of the bags. We will fill them up with uh, many different goodies uh, and we'll be handing them out at supermarkets tomorrow uh, at Jumbo and Albert Heijn in Delft. Be sure to follow us on Instagram and uh, in our story, we will uh, keep you updated on where we will share the, uh, the, the bags with you. So again, everybody, thank you very much for uh, uh, joining our event of the Energy Club uh, today. Uh, I have one last. Uh, please don't forget to fill out the survey if possible. We want to keep doing events that are great and that you guys like, but we don't want to continue doing events that are not interesting or things. Just let us know what topics you want to hear about and what kind of events we can do, at least online for the moment. We have a lot planned in person as soon as the restrictions lift. But please, please, please fill out those surveys if you can. Right, I sent another uh, another link out for the survey. Uh, so please make us happy and, and tell us what you like to see so that we can offer you the best content that you would, uh, would want to have. So thank you very much, everybody, again. And uh, I think we'll wrap it up for now. Bye-bye. Thank you, bye-bye. Thank, thank you for bye. attending. Thank you, bye. bye.